The Explorer from Be Cool Bikes is a powerhouse all-terrain electric bike. Now don't let the name fool you, they definitely could have come up with something better, but this bike is one of the best performing bikes I've reviewed in this price range. It's got a killer speed, full suspension, and the longest range I've seen on a $1,500 bike. So let's get things started off with the speed test. But this is the speed test. I've got close to a full battery. I'm going to start on pedal assist level one and see how fast I get on every uh, speed mode. There's five of them. So here we go, pedal assist level one first. For pedal assist one, I got six miles per hour. Pedal assist two, 11. Pedal assist three, 17. Pedal assist four, 22. And pedal assist five, the highest level, 27 miles per hour. One shy of the rating of 28. Now 27 miles per hour makes the Explorer the second fastest bike I've reviewed in this range. The Explorer comes with a massive 750 watt brushless gear hub motor in the rear wheel, powered by a 48 volt, 21 amp hour lithium battery that has a battery level readout, a USB port, takes eight to nine hours for a recharge, can be removed, and is rated for 900 charge cycles. As most of you know, I always like to see how that translates to power, so I did an acceleration test between Pedal Assist 5 and Straight Throttle. Both have a quick acceleration, which is one of the fastest in this price range. Pedal Assist does give you a quicker start, reaching 27 miles per hour in just under 18 seconds. Okay guys, this is the range test, full battery, pedal assist level five, start my tracking app, and let's see how far I can go. Here's everything I liked and didn't like about the Explorer, starting off with the design. They built the battery about halfway into the frame so it doesn't stick out that much and it kind of blends in with the uh, down section of the bike. And then they've got this skinny bar on top of that. I think it's a pretty cool design and I do like the color. It's been a while since I reviewed a white bike. Be Cool Bikes has two models to choose from. Both are fat tire bikes. The Explorer comes in three colors and costs $1,699. They do have a bunch of accessories like mirrors, locks, bags, and a bunch of replacement parts. Now I'm 5'11 and I feel the frame is a good size for my height. The handlebars are propped up high enough to where I'm not really leaning forward too much to grab them. The Explorer is rated for a rider 5'2 to 6'2 and up to 350 pounds. Now even though the aluminum alloy frame is smaller than most fat tire bikes I've tried, it is heavy, weighing 78 pounds. That makes the Explorer the heaviest bike in this price range. Most bikes I don't feel comfortable taking my hands off the handlebars on the first ride and I have no problem with this. When I'm topping this out, swerving on the trail, I can feel it pulling me back to center. You do get that with these fat tire bikes. This one just does it better than other bikes I've tried. The bike is put together very well. There's no cracks, no squeaking, no noises that you don't want to hear. And it is just a solid feeling ride. 30 miles per hour is my threshold to determine if a bike feels stable or not, if it can handle those higher speeds. A lot of bikes tend to shake around that speed and I get nervous going any faster. Uh, that's not the case with this. You could confidently go 30 plus miles an hour on this bike. The handlebars are a little bit narrow for my liking. Uh, for a bike this size, I would like to see another two or three inches. I do like the seven speed shifter. You got a push button here, so going up is one at a time. And then one push on my thumb goes from seven down to one. And that's quick, smooth, and fast. I've got no problems with the shifter. The grips aren't that bad either. They're pretty average for a bike in this price range. The saddle is large and average for comfort, especially with the two small shocks underneath. I did this range test without any padded gear and felt fine. The pedal assist isn't my favorite. Uh, when I'm going about 15, 20 miles an hour, if I stop and then start pedaling again, on gear seven, it takes about four to five revolutions for the power to kick back on. It's one of the longest delays in power I've seen on a bike. When I stop, it's about maybe a quarter to a half a second, so it stops pretty quick. From a standstill, it actually kicks on within about a half a revolution. So it's very quick off the line. The half twist throttle gives you full power at all times. It doesn't depend on the pedal assist level and can be used in unison with the pedal assist. Once I hit about 15 miles per hour, I really can't pedal fast enough to make a difference. You just have to keep the pedals turning, it does the rest. I spent two days testing the range and recorded each trip for a total distance of 30.85 miles. 
That is below the range rating of 45 to 70 miles, but when you take the elevation into consideration, which was 1,973 feet, 30 miles is a very good range. I've never had a bike at that type of a range with that much elevation gain. And the Explorer outdid the other bikes in this test by 10 miles. The Explorer is a full suspension bike with a front fork spring suspension that gives 120 millimeters of travel and can be adjusted and locked and rear suspension with 180 millimeters of travel. It also has 26 by four inch all-terrain fat tires. I took the bike off-road to see how it handled. For a $1,500 bike, you're not gonna have like super, you know, awesome shocks, but they're pretty good for a bike this affordable. I mean, I'd stay away from, you know, super rocky and bumpy terrain. This is a hard pack green rated trail. It's doing just fine. So yeah, if you wanna take this off-road, you definitely can. I always like to switch the power off and see if the bike can be ridden without any assistance. Now this is the no power test. This is a slight downhill and I'm on gear seven going eight miles an hour. I'm gonna flip around and go up it now. Going up the road now and averaging nine miles an hour, I'm on gear three. It's a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be for how heavy this bike is. Now you definitely wouldn't want to take this on any hills. Anything bigger than a slide uphill, it's going to be pretty hard. The bike's motor produces 80 newton meters of torque and is rated to climb a 17% grade. This is one of the steepest hills I could find in the area and I've used this hill to test out bikes in the past. It's about 20 to 22% grade, so it's, it is very steep. I've got a full battery pedal assist level five. Now let's see how fast I can make it up this. We're really starting to climb here, going eight miles an hour up to nine. I've got it on the easiest gear and I am feeling some good resistance. Nothing too bad, just pedaling casually. Still averaging nine miles an hour. Up to 10, coming over the top. And there we go. That seemed to do a pretty good job. Most bikes really start screaming at me. That motor starts making a lot of noise when it hits that really steep part. And this one didn't, it just powered right up it. Don't let the weight of the bike fool you into thinking it can't climb. This has got plenty of power and was one of the fastest bikes up this hill. The Explorer comes with dual hydraulic disc brakes. I'm gonna head back down the same hill that I came up for the hill test. There is a sign here that says no bikes allowed because it's that steep. So <laughs> it's a great hill to test out the brakes. Let's see what happens. We got a lot of hydraulic brakes. They're smooth, abrupt, really nice brakes. Next, let me give you a rundown of the LCD screen and control pad. The screen displays battery life, your trip odometer, speed, speed mode, and your watts. On the left side is the pad. You just have an up and down arrow and then a mode button. If you hit the middle button, that will switch between your total odometer and trip. The up and down arrows change your pedal assist you have zero to five. If you hold down the top button, that does turn on the lights. You do have front and rear lights. The front light isn't the brightest. I did take this out at night the other day and I could go 25 miles an hour, but <laughs> I was a little bit nervous. Not the brightest light I've ever seen. But you do have left and right blinkers, which is kind of cool. And then below that is an electric horn. If you hold down the bottom button for about three seconds, that engages the walk assist mode. Oh, calm down. Oh. <laughs> and you don't have to hold that button down. That'll continue to go until you hit the brakes, as you just saw. If you hold down the top and bottom arrows, that will give you access to the settings. And then you have a P menu. P1 is a screen brightness, and I do have it set to the highest level. And as you can see, it is a sunny day, and I can see that just fine. A P2 is how you change the units kilometers to miles per hour. Uh, you can set the bike to shut off between one and 60 minutes. P8 is the speed limiter. So if you don't want full power, then you can decrease that. P11 is the pedal assist sensitivity. I did have a set to the highest sensitivity for this review. And that's it. That's pretty much all the P settings that you need to be aware of. There's a few more features I haven't mentioned that I wanted to uh, show you. Uh, as you can see, it does come with a rear rack and that has a weight capacity of 60 pounds. The brake levers do cut the power off as soon as you press either one of them. So kind of a safety feature there. And the throttle does have a kill switch. You got a red button over here. So if you don't want to use the throttle, just hit that. 
I've actually never seen a feature like that, so it's kind of cool. Just totally kills the throttle. The Explorer comes with a water-resistant rating, which means it can handle splashing from any angle, a two-year warranty, free shipping in the lower 48, and a 14-day free return policy. Overall, here's what you can expect if you're around my weight of 185 pounds. A top speed of 27 miles per hour for both throttle and pedal assist level five. A fast and speedy acceleration reaching that speed in 18 seconds. A huge range in very hilly terrain of over 30 miles. That's the longest range out of any bike in this category. Hill climbing ability is fantastic. I tested it on a hill over a training which powered up it at nine miles per hour and was one of the fastest bikes up it. And the dual hydraulic disc brakes are smooth, powerful, and also some of the best in this range. To be honest, I wasn't expecting much with this bike. I've never heard of the company and the name sounds kind of goofy. So I was expecting a goofy bike, but that was far from the case. I would definitely recommend it, especially if you live in hilly terrain. It can power up some serious hills without draining the battery. If you want more info, I've got the link in the description along with my website, electricrevolutionreviews.com. There you can find all my reviews organized by price and capability. If you want to see what else is out there, you should definitely check it out. Before you go, hit that like button and be sure to subscribe for the latest in electric bike, board, and scooter reviews. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.